Hello everybody, we are back for another part of this team building um, Teak series. Yeah, um, so today we're going to go over five more teams and I'm yet to update my builder with some teams that I haven't quite added yet, but um, we're probably going to still have like three more parts, maybe four, but today we're definitely going to be working on Luke Blacker, Blaker, I'm not sure how to say it, I'm sorry, um, Michael Minusi. Naw 3's first and second team, and Rolo Rossi's team, and maybe we'll get Cuban Russ Wilson, but I actually, um, oh by the way, I love Russell Wilson, but um, I also think this seems like really solid, but I want, I'm probably going to save that to start off the next episode. Um, yeah, so anyway, Luke Blaker, um, using a Veil team, this looks interesting, um, but there are some refinements we can make. Um, first and foremost, I disagree with somebody's EV spread and fourth move, move choices. Um, I'm trying to volume up to six. I think you guys can hear this music. Well, I'm really hoping you can. Um, well, if you can't, then I apologize. Um, my computer fan is almost as loud as the music for me, but in past videos, it's been able to pick it up despite that and not pick up the fan, so maybe OPS is just a godsend after all. But anyway, on this team, I like the six Pokemon for a hyper offensive team, but I think that it needs some work. First and foremost, Ninetales Alola really prefers running max HP. Um, oh, sorry. Um, let me explain. Basically, you want to be able to get it in more than once. Um, ideally, anyway. You want to get it in more than once, so you can set Veil multiple times. That would go a long way for this team especially. Um, we'll give it 8 defense, just as better natural special defense, so it goes a longer way in physical defense. Um, as I don't even think we need max speed. I mean, is our running Calion Dragon really a big deal? I don't think we're going to really encounter them much. Um, honestly, on a Veil team like this, you kind of want to outrun Jirachi, though. So, go to 330. And we're going to actually pump defense here. Because we already live like two from Cleft, for example. But this is going to allow us to live something like, um, say, an Iron Head from Corviknight and then set up again. Or... Live any hit from Conkle there after Veil with ease. Um, he pout on, you know, etc. We can potentially get Hypnosis off more likely. Yeah, and I think that just goes a long way. for the move. Um, you don't really need Boom Blast, um, but is it an Encore? It does not Encore. Um, <sighs> I'm going to say give it Encore over Moon Blast for now. Yeah, Hypnosis is pretty great to have. Um, if you really want to hit Hydreigon for a one-shot, and you're worried about not hitting Steel-types, well, Steel-types you don't hit them, but yeah, you know, Freddy Strike gives you pretty damn good neutral coverage against non steel so yeah, um, I think this is what you want to do with this, though. Um, as for Bisharp, running max HP just isn't worth it. Um, I don't know if you necessarily need max speed right now, though. Um, Sucker is just as strong against other. Honestly, you can, if you want to run some bulk, you can. Um, but you really want to be quicker than Aegislash, just so you avoid mind games. Um, and also being quicker than Tyranitar to Iron Head, that's huge. So I do go down to 222. So seeing as you wanted some, some bulk, we'll, um, we'll, we'll come to a compromise here. Well, um, 220, yeah, okay. And then we'll give you a 68, is that even or odd? Uh, 64. All right, we'll make it 192, yeah. And I, I think this is just, if you want to run bulky Bishop, this is about as much bulk as you can go. In reality, I would just run max speed, but... This is fine, yeah. And in case I want to use this, I'm just going to make it my move order. Yeah, but this is solid for sure. Um, I really prefer Ice Shard to Liquidation. Having priority on as many things you can on Hyper Offense teams is huge. You're going to have it on three across this team, and that's going to go a really long. Please tell me this isn't Sucker Punch. Yeah, you're good. Um, you're going to have it on three on this team, um, and that's just great because it kind of negates not having a Scarfer and giving things free turns like when you're trying to set up. So, yeah. Shard. Um, this is, yeah, this is optimal here. Um, so it's just always going to be a bit of a fishy matchup, but it can work. As for this, um, seeing as you're going slower on this, you want to have this be plus speed still, despite having Sucker Punch. And a Pyro Ball. Then Headbutt, Sucker Punch. But, um, yeah, honestly, this is fine. And I actually kind of agree with Sucker Punch in this team. You don't really need high jump kick slash low kick a ton. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this set. I think this is great. Rock Gym? No, 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 don't want to run Rock Gym. You want to come on. So, 
the idea is if you're facing bulky cores like cleft plus stock specs, you can combine the breakthrough even if they don't hit you with super effective moves. But if you're facing um, more offensive teams, you could automize. Hopefully, they hit you with like a hex or a shadow sneak or a knockoff, and then yeah. But combined, having combined is really important as you've got to break balance teams. Because balance teams are harder to deal with than offensive teams. You usually, Bishop and Plus to just shred offense, especially Sucker Punch and Drace in the back. So yeah, um, combined is super important here. Um, you don't need max speed here. We only have to 242. Um, let me see a plus two speed here, so if I, um, two, four eighties, um, oh, this is 486, 492. Okay, so you want to outrun, um, Drachi, so 492 divided by two is, um, 246, 246, so I need 247, what's in the 247 area, this is, it, it's just 250. Because Jigger Speed's never really used anymore. Um, and if they do, they're just going to quick take you anyway, because they're going to sink their slow. 252. And this lets you run HP, and any bulk is great, because it lets you take more super effective hits. Yeah, it lets you take more super effective hits, which is huge. Um, last but not least, Dragapult. Um, I don't like to set down enough. Phantom Force is never worth using on this. Fire Blast is of the utmost importance to Lord Celesteela, because let's say... Um, Let's say you get a Fire Blast off on Celestial early, then all of a sudden you can't even body press your Bishop, so then Bishop you just win. Or Cloister doesn't even need to get a flinch to be body pressed for Ionis. It's just huge. Um, we're actually going to run minus, and we're going to run 216 speed. So you have a Ghost Resist, and you have two Sarker Punchers and Light Charter, and you're at 40 HP, and that's going to be huge behind Auravel just to take a number of hits, even super effective ones, but also means you take a knockoff from opposing Zero Aura. At full health plus stealth rocks, so you take it does 87.5 or it does less than 87.5. Yeah, um, this also helps for a couple things like moon blast from Claff after rocks, I think. Um, yeah, and you can actually take two of those always with this as well behind Bale, so it's worth noting, even with hail damage. Yeah, um, so keep that in mind. Um, but this, yeah, this is definitely a threat I'd run. You don't need any special attack to two a kill physical defensive corvinet with fire blast or roast fire thorn. So, yeah, all right, Luke Baker, your team is done. We have, um only seven minutes in. All right, we could keep going here. Michael Mancusi. Mancusi, 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 Mancusi. Michael Mancusi. All right, my bad about that. I'm really not good at these pronunciations. Um, Mandibuzz, Cinderace, Toxpex, Clef, Rhyperior, and Zero Aura. Okay. Um, Bishop's a pain. Bishop's a pain to ask this team. Um, really good against opposing Cinderace, but Rillaboom, ah, oh, Mandibus should be fine. Um, I, you probably gonna want to change some spreads though. No, you got the good Rhyperior. I like this Rhyperior spread a lot. Um, yeah. Um, I don't like Expert Belt here. In fact, you know what, actually, so here's the deal. On this team, you could either make an Expert Belt Grass Start or Leftovers Toxic. Toxic hits things like Seismitoad and um, Powdown, but Grass Knot is more brute force, and it means that Cinderace just doesn't even have to worry about them, like potentially checking even if it's toxic. So you know what, actually, I, this is a very rare instance where I'm gonna say, okay, using Extra Build Zero Aura actually makes full complete sense to me. I personally don't like the set. I always use Magnet or Leftovers even more so, just for reasons that are Clef related, but this is fair. Who's playing it? How busted is the uh, similar summer? Somewhere. Sure, that's an answer that we could go to the sudden defense right now. Um, yeah, we could potentially make this SmackDown, but we don't need the core help a ton with Cinderace. Um, I like the bulk of set here, yeah, but no, we're not good enough against Trackdown to afford that. But you do have a ghost resist though, you don't really need sucker punch. I think I want to make this low kick, so here's why. Um, not as nasty plot of dragon. Being able to hit that is important. Getting a kill on Karen Black is important. Hitting opposing Rhyperior is actually kind of important because sometimes they could live even an extra ball to grass not. But also, um, what is it? What is it? Um, oh yeah, um, just being able to do a little more to size of episode is nice and getting the kill on Tyranitar is huge because right now your crunch switch-ins are both destroyed by Stone Edge. And I don't love to expand to these teams, even if you've got zero order to kill it already. Basically grand, but with huge power and speed to creep of Gen 8. Can't say I've encountered 
Eat our without sprays anytime soon. Or fire. Not thinking. Um, I don't know why I said soon. Um, but yeah, I think that you, you just prefer a fighting coverage in this team. And as for low kick versus high jump kick, when you have Pyro Ball, you're already hitting all the steel types. Um, so low kick still assures you damage on Terrakion and Hydreigon and Sharon Black and Tyranitar. And um, I guess Bisharp without missing. You just miss out on Exodil and Farrowthorn really. That high jump kick hit. And Pyro Ball again is going to decimate them anyway. Um, so basically you just do a bit less to Rotom Heat and Gastrodon. Gastrodon you've got extra ball grass not for. Um, Rotom Heat you've got Rhyperior for and it also Zen Headbutt can do a number to it. So not really a big deal at all. And now you don't have to risk A missing or B high jump kicking into ghost types or protect. And that's huge. I also like throwing the forward defense in, forward in the special defense. Um, I should have a little more than HP and Gox if you look at it. Um, switch on Defog. This needs to be quicker than Bisharp. Actually, we're going to make it quicker than Chandelure because this is your perfect Chandelure answer too. So we're going to make this a plus speed variant. Um, yeah, 264. Um, this also helps against a few other things right now. Yeah, um, that speed tier is getting more and more congested as we speak, honestly. Digger's B is showing up on some hyper offenses, but more importantly, Aegislash is starting to run plus speed on Swords Dance stats to try and outrun things like Como. Um, Bisharp's a huge one, as we said, and Cloyster outrunning that can potentially go a long way too. Um, and yeah, and Crowdot, I guess. It's cool. And Altar, so yeah. Um, you're gonna just start aging special defense, it's fine. I prefer 248 just in case you get knocked out if you take one less damage from rocks, and you can just throw that extra eating the bulk. Honestly, you could justify physical defense in this team, but right here alone is actually a huge physical tank, so yeah. Um, well, not before DLC, that is logistically impossible. Even time. After DLC, we will be focused on the post cinematic game, which does not currently exist, so I have no plans, but we shall see. I don't love people PMing me about that, just because, like, I don't know. I don't know what DLC is going to bring. I don't know how the metagame is going to react. We can't suspect it now. DLC comes out in nine days. A suspect takes two and a half weeks minimum. Libero Cinderace might even take more because it's such a new Pokemon. So yeah, um, I don't appreciate those PMs, honestly, but I understand why I get them, and I always make sure to answer them because it's my job. But yeah, um, this is your answer to everyone wondering if there's going to be a uh, Libero Cinderace suspect. I don't know. We're going to fight wait till DLC for sure. As for then, we'll find out. But yeah, um, anyway, let's get back to Michael Minucci's team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this looks really good. I just um, took out IVs here to make it slower. Pex doesn't need max. It only really needs 188 to take... Wait, no, that's Farathorn. Wait, what does Pex need? Pex doesn't need a straight conversion meta game. Hold up. Let's make sure we always live plus tall Lucha. Sky attack, even if Robo are common right now. Um, plus two, that's 82 two now. Take one out there, take a lot out of here. So 156, yeah, 156 plus. And that also means you still leave plus two Bisharp. You still leave any Earthquakes, you still leave Choice Band Rillaboom, Choice Band Aegislash times 2, um, you shrug off most Con Kelder hits that are an Earthquake, you even live you know, Hit Plum, Life Orb, Zero Aura after Rocks, um, yeah, you live Close Combat in a Stone Edge from Terrakion after Rocks, maybe even Close Combat for Earthquake without Rocks, you live a hit from Rhyperior, etc. So yeah, and I just want to bump the best in the defense, um, 104. How's this team against... You got no knock user. On top of that, you really don't need Scald. And you don't have like anything that toxic really, and you're really weak to Prima Arena. You know what, this needs Poison Jab Knock. Poison Jab, cover, knock off this. And Haze is still important for Common Eye because you don't beat that necessarily. So they're on physical defensive, so yeah, you don't want to rely on Syndria stacks if you bulk Blender's face, it sucks. And Pyro Ball making you, um, bulk making you fighting type sucks, and physical defense, so yeah. Um, sounds good, no problem. Yeah, all right, what's my boy Leo up to? Nothing. Classic as lazy Leo. If you're watching this, Leo, you suck. Just kidding, my boy. All right, yeah, Michael Manusi, this team is solid. I highly doubt Leo's watching this. Leo doesn't watch my shit. Um, I think the only guy on the mod team that really watches my shit is Ruff. Um, yeah, big shout out to him. Especially if you're bro. Oh, he's also in the room. Not much going on with him either, though, it seems. All right, yeah, this was a really solid team, Michael Manusi. Um, 
we're done with two, and we're at the uh, 15 minute mark. Yeah, okay. Wow, my head like said 15 as a guess, and it turned out to be 15. Oh god, my phone's only 14 percent, and I got the alarm going off. Great. Um, we'll figure that out later. Um, okay, comment question because we're about halfway through the video. I'm trying to get in the habit of doing comment questions. Um, Pokemon and think of one. Okay, what is your favorite ghost type competitively in this generation and historically? It can be the same Pokemon or it could be different answers, one for this generation, one historically. And why? And if you want, you could cite your favorite experience with it as well. As for me, my favorite ghost type historically is probably Cofagrigus in black and white underuse. It runs the offensive trick room set. This is back when Hidden Power was a uh, move, of course. It ran Nasty Plot, Trick Room, Shadow Ball, Hidden Power, Fighting. And it was a really potent late game cleaner, specifically with spikes. I loved using it and Moxie's Scarf Power Cross in late game. Black and White Energy is actually my favorite metagame of all time. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the blue reference there. Anyway, we got Sun here. Um, Hatterene Sun. Um, Assault Vest Hatterene by Gnaw3. His first team. All right. Um, we actually have a Torkoal spread that's much better than Max Max that we made on our Sun team the other day. Oh, the Sun's all the way up here. Yeah, yeah, um, All right. Torkoal the up. Um, this spread lets you always live a hit from Specs Aegis Slash and a plus two overheat from Rotom Heat. Um, as for Toxic versus Yawn, I think Toxic's better to catch Rotom Heat. You have a Gastrodon, but Gastrodon doesn't actually fit on this team at all, in my opinion. Um, it leaves you really like it's a momentum suck, and you only have so many sun turns, you only get this in so many times when you don't like Wish or Healing Wish. This isn't even Healing Wish, and I'm gonna change that in a bit. So, we're actually gonna remove Gastrodon from this team. It just doesn't. I know you want to cover all these little checkboxes defensively, but having offensive pivots actually makes your team so much more proactive. And you currently don't have a ghost resist, and Gastrodon isn't a good check to specs pull. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna um, we're gonna change that up a little bit. Um, we're gonna make it. What if we make? Corvin had Amanda Buzz, and then a Steel type last. Corviknight, Amanda Buzz, Steel type last. Corviknight, Amanda Buzz, Steel type last. Corviknight, Amanda Buzz, Steel type last. Kill the guy am I talking like this? Holy shit! Um. Well, we're weak. Hmm. We are really weak to Rotom Heat like this. Um. And no Steel type beat Rotom Heat. And Amanda Buzz doesn't do there. So maybe going with a Ghost Resist that beats it. Maybe going with a Hydreigon. What if we go with Hydreigon with Defog? And then we change Hat to another removal that can also check Dragapult. Yeah. What if we make... Wait, what if we make this Amanda Buzz? Then we don't use Hydreigon, but we use... Dragapult, and then we change Corviknight to a different steel type that is again a resistance to ice. Yeah, 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 there we go. Um, hmm. Oh, I have an idea. All right, bear with me. Actually, you know what? I've just defaced half of this team. I'm sorry. This wasn't worth it. We're gonna actually go back. Um, this was a hat, Hatterene. I don't wanna deface your teams too much. I I, I, toy, I toy too much. Let's keep the Hatterene Corviknight Venus. Let, let's just focus on the last Pokemon that gives us a Dragapult check. Yeah, we'll focus on the last Pokemon that gives us a Dragapult check. And that'll be fine. Because that's really the main vulnerability of the team right now. Um, You know what would be really cool? Um, I know, I don't know what's really cool. Dragapult check. Um, hmm. What would be really cool is if we use like, no, that makes us too weak to Rotom Heat, Never mind. I, I want to say Incineroar. What if we make this Incineroar and then we make this, not Assault Vest. I'm sorry, I just, Assault Vest doesn't fit. You want Healing Wish a ton. Yeah, so what if we make this um, Healing Wish Psychic, um, Dazzling Gleam, Mystical Fire. Just up is not out, you know. Um, hmm.
just get sunny day, does it? No. Of course not. What fun is that? Um. Item. 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 What am I saying? I don't know. Send help. <laughs> Please. I've been a good person, I swear. This kind of sucks without Combine. We really don't need Nuzzle, by the way. That would not help a ton here. Um. Yo! I have an idea. Hear me out. So, my thought is every single hazard setter is going to lose to a Charizard and Sun. Or Venusaur and Sun. And if they're a Powdown, then you could actually... Yo, this is going to sound mega ratchet, but we're going to make this eject button. Um, so you could switch in. If they go for hazard, you bounce it back. If they go for attack, then you can get right out to your Charizard and Venusaur. This is genius. Okay, it might be shit, but it is genius. Um, let me find my Hatterene spec from the other deck. Um, maybe I use it down here. I use it on rain, right? Um, yeah, this is the spread I used. It always took kilos to pout on, and it lives in extra drill, iron head, and speeds for packs. So yeah, that helps a lot. Oh, I overshot. I overshot. I overshot. No three one. All right. Yep, there we go. Yeah. And um, it's just a cool spread. Also helps against the Oizel Scarf Gengar as well, yeah. Um, yeah, this is actually really cool with a jack button. I know, I know it looks insane. This is bizarre. Ooh, no, this is not the right moveset. No, you gotta run the four fire move. Um, I say that unironically. I know I made the video kind of like mockingly, but... Let me explain here. Um, so first and foremost, locking into Solar Beam always means they're gonna have something to take advantage of that. You might even get, you might get one kill on a predicted water type, but you have Venusaur to take advantage of those water types. What you want Zard to do is break so Venusaur can sweep. And you can't give them the free turn to take advantage of by locking moves like Weather Blow. You can justify running Air Slash, not really Focus Blast, because Air Slash can flinch and it's Flying Stab. Um, Focus Blast only if you expect Tyranitar, and looking at this team here, and you got Corviknight with max physical defense, um, plus Venusaur. You know what? This team can really afford to run Focus Blast. Well, well, yeah, this team probably wants it because you got no um, no rock resist. You're going to say Focus Blast over Fire Blast, sure. But you need Flamethrower, Weather Ball, and Over to you. Flamethrower gives you a spammable move if Sun might expire, but you're still Sun's up now. Weather Ball gives you a spammable move if Sun's staying up. And Over to gives you a nuke. You always need one of Fire Blast, Over or Over to and the two other moves in my eyes. And I think Over to is a better one when you got Weather Ball, which does virtually the same damage as Fire Blast almost. So, yeah. And Focus Blast just hits um, opposing Tyranitar. I'm going to give four defense just because it goes a little more to that lower base defense. And special defense, yeah. Um, yup, yup, yup. Um, I don't like Iron Head here. You need U-Turn. You really don't care about Clef. And Iron Head is only for Clef. And like Prim Arena sub, I guess, but Graver does that too. But yeah, you don't care about that. You, what you want to do here is you want to have slow U-Turn as much as possible. You really only need Body Press because it helps against Drill. So we're going to minus out the speed and we're going to run zero speed. And I know this might look weird to some newer players, but on Corviknight, you do this a lot of times to get slower U-Turn. Being slower than a pad on is especially good because then if you're roosting against it, it can't go for slow Earthquake. It Earthquakes, then you roost. You don't roost first and get hit by Earthquake. So that's a really cool dynamic as well. And also being slower than opposing Corviknight is huge. Slower than um, Mandibuzz and um, other potential U-Turn involved filters. Yeah, it goes a long way. So yeah, and you want physical defense from this team for sure. Um, Venusaur, yeah, this is the right set. Um, or, yeah. And Incineroar, I'm going to take the same spread from my Sun team as well. Um, I guess we just love Incineroar Sun nowadays. But um, yeah, no, I know that I had to change the Pokemon in Incineroar. But I, I tried to keep the core of your team intact. Um, I just Gastrodon was such a complete and utter momentum sap. It's a pivot without any way to actually like pivot out of. Well, hard, besides hard switching and letting something else take a hit. And yeah, it checks things, but it takes server because you got to spam recover. And it's a curse set, so even then it's like Robin, it's just it's a standalone Pokemon that needs support and a dedicated balance team. And this isn't that. So yeah, um this also helps against Cloyster, the spread you live a plus one rock blast after intimidate, you get a plus one, yeah. So you've got two lines of defense against that with Corviknight and Incineroar. Yeah, um this is basically my sun team with Hatterene over Darmanitan. Uh Hatterene over Darmanitan. Which makes it better against packs, but worse against offensive teams, as you, your speed control is completely reliant on Venusaur. So yeah, um, if you want to change the Hatterene, then I personally would make it either Scarf Darm or Ditto. Um, just as a piece of advice. I, Ditto is actually a bit more consistent against Lad right now, but Scarf Darm is much more upside in general. 
So yeah, um, hope that helps. But this is about as good as some teams will get, really. These, these six are like the six I used in the lab before. So hope you enjoyed. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm calling this done. We now are three teams in, and we're at the 25-minute uh, mark. Okay, it's taking not a bad time, but not great. Uh, and now I know all three wants us to use rain. Okay. I don't love this um, configuration, first and foremost. Um, I'm fine with this, although I want to make it a spread that's a bit more optimal. Um, you want to take two moon blasts after. Um, you want to take two moon blasts after Stealth Rock with your Pelper, and I think you want to run Hurricane U-turn as well. I don't remember if that was your set. Um, yeah, you are. You you had the right moves. Um, but yeah, um, running. You only need like six defense blasts to still you still check the virus and race. And you want minus. Um, you want this so you could under speed not only like Corvin like I mentioned before, but also just other Pelper. Um, being slower than a power down, so it can't like earthquake and roost. Um, and also, let's say you lead with both of them, you bring the both of them to double down. The Pokemon are slower, gets the weather up second, and it stays up. So yeah, um, that's why you really want to run min speed Palper like this. And special defense, yeah, it helps a lot with Clef. Um, and potentially even like taking it from Dragapult, although you don't need that attempt because you got Mandibus here. I don't love the taunt set though. Um, in fact, you're really weak to Bisharp, so we're going to make this foul play, roost, U-turn, defog. Um, and we're going to make it quicker than Bisharp, yeah. But not quicker than Chandler because we're rain, so he's kind of naturally fucked with that. Um, we're like 241, which also gets Primarina and plus Speed Aegis Slash. Um, but yeah, um, foul play is really important for Drill here and Bisharp, and Bisharp especially, but also Rock Slide Drill you kind of need against because this lives plus two Rock Slide, this doesn't. I um, mean, you see 246 defense versus 276, yeah, but then you notice 323 HP is literally 100 lower than Mandibuzz. Actually, I run 248 because if you get knocked off, then you take one more damage from rocks. So, yeah, and eight defense, it just, it's, special defense helps. Um, so, yeah, but you need U-turn here. You can't be running taunt and wasting all your turns. You want to just pivot out of there once you get your business done and get to one of your Swiss swimmers. But as for their stats, um, it sucks that you can't run a Hydro Pump and Weather Ball here, but actually you can. Does this learn? This learns Focus Blast. Yes, you know what? We're going to make this... First off, locking the specs on Ludicolo when it doesn't have like a super spammable move like on the grass side isn't worth it. So we're gonna run um, Hydro Pump, Leaf, um, Giga Drain, Giga Drain, yeah. Um, you really don't need Ice Beam for anything besides Drill Boom and Hydro Pump and Rain 2 kills it anyway. Focus, Blast, and. Does it learn Weather Ball? Well, wait. I wanna hit Talk Specs with this. You know what, if we're running Draw Terrain, this is actually a lure to talk specs, so never mind. We're gonna go Weather Ball. Weather Ball over, um, I was gonna think Leaf Storm, but yeah, no, Weather Ball is better here. Um, yeah, and having dual water is great, because it enables Hydro as well as you have Accurate Option and Risky Option, you know. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, if you want Spikes and Rocks, which personally I'm not a huge fan of. Um, oh yeah, this also only needs to be 252, 188, I think. Wait, without Carathorn. 188. What if it's with rocks? Okay, we're just gonna keep the max defenses. If rocks go up, they're not always gonna be removed easily. So therefore, we might as well maximize rocks against zero. Alright, now it's only a 3.9% chance to kill after rocks, so yeah. But with leftovers, if you were to make leftovers, you'd make it um you'd make it 188. But also leech seed it, it wastes turn. Um you really want power up here. I think. Because you're not running Grass Knot on Size of the Toad. Yeah, and you can't fit it if you want to keep rocks on that. Um, wait, wait. Yo, an idea alternatively would be Explosion. Explosion kills you, that gives you a pivot. And also, it's mad good against Cinderace. It's really good against Holucha. It's great against Hydreigon. Homo Elf, it's like trying to like set up against you, cure him. Yeah, you know what? Explosion is really cool because basically functions as like a memento in a way. You chip something, instead of you going to attack, you chip them, and that gives you free switch into a, a switch swim to a revenge color. Yeah, that's actually kind of fire. Um, we're gonna make this spikes, knock off, body, press, explosion. I know it sounds weird, but on rain teams like this, you kind of want to make sure you can max by pivot opportunity, so yeah. Um, all right, um, last set sort of Seismith and Drachi. Um, stealth Rock for sure. Earth power. We gave the Ludicolo focus blast. We don't need focus blast on both of these. So what we're gonna do here is actually we're gonna make it hydro pump, earth power, and weather ball. Just because you wanna be weather move as much as you can to justify the rain. 
but also it's just you're using water moves far more often than not. Earth Power Tokyo is physical defensive, so that's gonna throw it after like little hazards or trip damage or whatever. You got Fire Throne and Mandibo, so that's pretty possible, especially with this Lure Grass Knot on the Jirachi, which is also why I didn't feel need for power up on the Fire Thorn. Um, and this spread probably isn't optimal, but honestly, getting the most damage off with Grass Knot and Thunder is huge against things like Seismitoad, Rhyperior, Hippowdon, Free Grass Knot, regarding Thunder specifically against Corviknight and Mandibuzz, and Tox Effects is huge. So that's why I'm keep letting keep Max Attack, Max Special Attack without tinkering with anything. Best you can attack, probably helps with rolls against Jerum, after Stealth Rock, and Clefable from Fall. Um, especially like offensive Clefable from Fall in particular. But um, you're just gonna flinch him anyway, so yeah. Keep max speed and that's lit. Um, minus defense, probably a little better than minus special defense in the team, yeah, it's your fire resist. And yeah, that's Ludicolo Rain, as good as it'll get. Um, all right, done. And now one more team for today, I believe. Yeah, we're just past the 30 minute mark, we're about 31. So let's finish the Rolo Rossi team, and then we'll be done for today. Cool six here from Rolo Rossi, but there are some sets I definitely am not super fond of. Um, also kind of decimated by ghosts. Actually, decimated by hazards. Um, yeah, it's a spin drill. Okay, fine. So, rock, earthquake, iron head, rapid spin. Wow, zero is a huge problem. But hold up, we're gonna. This is actually can be bulky or extra drill here. Um, how much defense does it need? It's always love. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go 104 defense. Hold up, um. You see, let's always live up the rocks. 132, okay, yeah. Um, I know it looks weird to run a spread like this, but hear me out. First and foremost, you don't actually need all of your attack because you're not running sweaters and you're not trying to sweep. Honestly, you don't really need to be offensive drill in this team. It's you're like running especially defensive Corvi, which is more geared toward being a win condition with bulk up. So therefore, running this. Wait, I gotta put this on loop, right? Yeah, my bad. Anyway, um, running this is just better, and being able to check zero or is huge, especially this bunker. Uh, you don't really need toxic spikes here. You want to make this bunker for um, zero aura. And for Cinderace, Cinderace is a huge problem in this team right now. But also, just having that to scout choice move users is huge, like Karam, because um, they're a little weak to that. And I guess it helps against um, against Mandibuzz as well. Yeah, Mandibuzz is huge. Yeah, and I guess it slows down Conk as well. Yeah, you know, I think that's the play. Um, you really don't need Toxic Spikes with this as well. Um, unfortunately, you're weak to Primarina. Um, and you don't have a knockoff user. I'd say Baneful Knock. And, oh yeah, with this um, with this drill and Cinderace combination, especially being Choice Band Cinderace, you're actually really good against stuff already. So you don't need Haze necessarily. Haze um, won't help a ton because like you painful bunker hard lucha and just recover it off anyway. Um, it really just is for Cloister, and you can run um, you can run poison. Yeah. Um. And Corbin, oh yeah, Corbinite always lives a uh, plus two, even if it's specially defensive. And Choice Band Sucker Punch is huge, so yeah, um, I've actually run this. I know it looks weird, but trust me on that. Um, I think you do need physically defensive on this in this team. Yeah. Um, all right, we got to work on this set. Again, I don't know why people run Special Attack when the physical defense EV, even if it's only four, actually does something. And you got to undercreep opposing ones, so yeah. Um, just seven, so you still run Hip Out on. Um, it's just the optimal clap. I've went over it pretty much on every team because no one really gets it. But slower teleports do actually decides a ton of games. If you just always a quicker, then it's gonna suck because they're gonna get momentum. They're gonna see what you're switching to first and switch accordingly. Um, on top of that, four defense help with conquer the rolls. So yeah. Sorry. Um, top bulk up isn't worth. Sub bulk up is so much better because weak scalds and stuff. Um, there's actually a spread that I use for it. Um, bulk up. Substitute, great bird, bulk up. And this spread lets you outrun Conkle there, which is still cool on this team. And then, um, yeah, um, so there's one spread for this that runs like Infest with like 16 or like 24 defense. 
But on this team, since you got Max Sizzler and Spec and some physical defense on Drill and Wish, you actually want to run special defensive, especially because it sort of functions as your soft check to um, to Ghosts, in a sense, plus Clef, if anything happens to Clef in particular. But yeah, um, that's also when you need Sucker Punch in this for Dragapult. Um, in fact, nah, track is too big of an issue to run Adam in. You gotta run Jolly, yeah. Punch, arrow, ball, then headbutt, and never run 4 in HP on those 4 times. On a Stealth Rock Big Pokemon, because you take even more damage. It 4 kills you instead of 5 kills you now. But yeah, so we run without the defense. And yeah, you need plus speed. And Band is chill on this team. Yeah, you don't really need a win condition here, besides Corviknight, I'd say. And last but not least, if you want to make this Spec Tax. No, I'm sorry, this has to be Wisp, just because Wisp is super important for helping check things like, um, burning things like Bisharp, because right now your Corviknight doesn't beat it, it's not body press, and you just need that. It also just means that you're giving less free turns away once you lock into move and like accordingly, and giving free turns to offensive teams is a real problem with a team like this, because you're not a body press Corviknight, so checking things like Bisharp, like Mamoswine, like Dragon Dance, Weakness Policy, Tyranitar, which is making some appearances in the ladder. Um, like Swords Dance Drill is really hard. So yeah, you're actually decimated by Swords Dance Drill. I think it's a flinch at plus two. Um, so you gotta bulk up against it. Actually, you know what? We're gonna make it we're gonna make it plus plus defense. I'm sorry, we have to. Yeah, um, hold up. We're gonna make it yeah, it's 16. And then throw the west in special defense. And yeah, I know it looks weird with this spread, but you've got so much more bait. Let me actually do it in 275, 246. So let's see if this is plus. How much does it take to get 246 here? Okay, now we need more than 275. We know 272, see? So we saved three EVs by doing 16 plus here. And then look, instead of being at um at 272 to 275, we're still gonna be able to hit 246 here watch. See, we still have 246. We saved 12 EVs or three stat points by doing this. So yeah, that's important as well. Even if it looks like you're investing more in this, if this stat's so much higher, then Always test both out and see which is better. It's like a first thing of you being. Anyway, we gotta make this spell tag. Um, and we can probably, yeah, we, we can't afford to make it mods either. So it's gotta be timid spell tag. Willow with U turn. Um, honestly, it's just really, really needed for, um, well, A, being quicker than other Dragon Ball, but B, the main big thing is that you wanna wisp things like this shark, things like Cloyster. Um, I guess you don't, you close your lives, it doesn't really live even a minus two or like a non-status hex, but no, Bisharp's huge, um, it's a big one, but yeah, Tyranitar is another one, um, what else is there? Oh yeah, any like homo if you lock into Shadow Ball, you're fucked against, they get a Sword Dance and an Earthquake, yeah, especially because you're not physical and score tonight, yeah, um, Drakion can be one if you're at minus two, locked into, yeah, being, not, not being locked with Dragon Ball's huge, Gives you outs against a lot of things that are hyper offensive or otherwise problematic. Toxic Spikes made those matchups a little bit better, but without Baneful, you were probably losing to things like the Halucha in the long haul anyway if Corviknight takes any chip. Because plus two close combat is doing a ton to your, your previously special defense Corviknight as well. And those teams chip Corviknight with ease. So now you're bold at least, so that'll help too. Yeah, um, I think this is just far more well rounded here um, as for Rolo Rossi, but yeah. Um, this is going to be a video tonight. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for tuning in. And the support for the series is overwhelming. Thank you guys so much. Leave a like. If you enjoyed this, comment your favorite part of this video. And let me know the answer to the question before. that. Oh, yeah, my your favorite ghost type competitively this generation and in general. Yeah, yeah, let me know about that. I'll talk about the practice and background and reviews. And as for this generation, because I didn't answer the full question, it would have to be Aegis Slash. It's really cool seeing it finally able to live in OU without getting banned at Ubers. Yeah, it's just a versatile array of sets. Unfortunately, a lot of people kind of feel it's infamous for that, but that's for another video. As for now, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoy. We're definitely going to have a few more of these parts left, so stay tuned. And be sure to subscribe. Peace.